In this video, we're going to discuss biological treatments of schizophrenia. Now, the biological treatments that you need to be aware about are drug therapy or drug treatments, and in particular, the use of antipsychotic medication. Now, there's two types. So there's typical and atypical, or conventional and atypical antipsychotics. So if you get asked a question that's biological treatments, you can talk about both types of antipsychotics as two different distinct treatments. So drug therapy is the main treatment or the main biological treatment of schizophrenia. Um, and it is found to be effective in treating patients during psychotic episodes. So the main medication used is antipsychotic medication. So typical antipsychotics are generally used for positive symptoms of schizophrenia. So for example, hallucinations and delusions. Now they reduce the effects of dopamine and therefore reduce the symptoms of schizophrenia. So if we think back to the dopamine hypothesis, that believes it is high levels of dopamine that is linked to the positive symptoms of schizophrenia. So therefore drug treatments are going to try to reduce the levels of dopamine and reduce those positive symptoms. Now in the exam, if you can give examples, so when I said there are they are trying to reduce the positive symptoms, for example, hallucinations and delusions, that is showing the examiner that you know um, that breadth of knowledge about schizophrenia. So they work by binding to the dopamine receptors. Um, they don't stimulate them, but they block their action. This means it reduces the stimulation of the dopamine system in the brain. And conventional antipsychotics or typical antipsychotics can eliminate the hallucinations and delusions experienced by people with schizophrenia. So they are trying to reduce that level of dopamine. They are preventing that dopamine from being stimulated and therefore eliminate those positive symptoms. Now, atypical antipsychotics also act on serotonin, not just dopamine. And they work on the dopamine pathway but also temporarily, temporarily occupy the D2 receptors which means they rapidly disconnect to allow normal dopamine transmission to occur. So remember when we talked about the revised hypothesis it was believed that it was abnormal levels of dopamine that was affecting the symptoms. So there were high levels and a deficit of levels of dopamine. Um, it's believed they work by treating the negative symptoms as well as the positive symptoms. So it's gonna deal with um, the negative symptoms such as speech poverty and abolition. And research has found that about one third of patients have shown no um, improvement with neuroplegic drugs, but they responded well to anti atypical antipsychotics. So i.e. when a patient has found to be um, unresponsive to typical atypical antipsychotic medication has found to be um, a good use of medication. If we look at an example of a past paper question, so this is an application question in regards to drug treatments. So two years ago, Jenny was diagnosed with schizophrenia. She has been taking a typical antipsychotic drug and there have been improvements in her positive symptoms. However, she still suffers negative symptoms and side effects. Her psychiatrist wants to change her medication from typical antipsychotics to one of the atypical antipsychotics and also suggests cognitive behavioural therapy. With reference to the item above, explain why Jenny's psychiatrist wants to move her um, to one of the atypical antipsychotics. So, you're going to mention what atypical antipsychotics are, so the fact that they're going to um, work on serotonin and the do dopamine productions to help with negative symptoms as well as positive symptoms. So you might want to reference that typical antipsychotics tend to work most effectively on positive symptoms, such as Jenny has. That's why she might still be suffering from negative symptoms. Whereas Antipsychotics or atypical antipsychotics also work by treating the negative symptoms as well as the positive symptoms because 
they um, allow normal dopamine transmission to occur. Equally, one third of patients who showed no improvement with typicals, antipsychotics, did show an improvement using atypical drugs. Also, atypical drugs are meant to be more effective in terms of there are less side effects. So there might be more side effects with typicals and atypical um, antipsychotics have less serious side effects, which means a person might be more willing to carry on with the medication. Moving on to some research then, or some um, evaluation points. So research has shown that they are effective. So in a, a review of 29 studies, it was found that the relapse rates occurred in 55% of those who were on the placebo drug compared to 19% who remained on the antipsychotic medication. In particular, they were effective in the positive symptoms such as hallucinations and delusions. So this difference in relapse rates implies that conventional or atypical um, and typical antipsychotics are effective in treating schizophrenia. So therefore it is, a, it is an effective treatment. Equally, atypical antipsychotics have advantages over typical antipsychotics. So for example, there are fewer side effects, in particular, the extra pyramidal side effects such as tardive dyskinesia, which means that patients are more likely to continue with their medication. However, they, the weakness is they do not appear to work for all patients and there are individual differences. So approximately 15% do not resp respond to atypical antipsychotics. This reduces the validity of the medica medication and suggests that they might not be effective for all patients with schizophrenia. Therefore, they might not be an appropriate treatment for schizophrenia. So the fact that it might not work for all patients suggests actually, is it appropriate to prescribe this medication? Is it effective? Probably not if it's not appropriate for all and there's individual differences. Another weakness is there are serious potential side effects from antipsychotics. So, for example, more than 20% of patients who take a neuroplegic drug for over a year develop tardive dyskinesia, which is um, involuntary movements of the facial muscles. In, and equally with atypical antipsychotics, there's a one to 2% risk of developing um, a reduction in the white blood cells, which can be life threatening. As a result, this would mean that both types of antipsychotics are not an appropriate form of treatment as they risk the patient's life and in or they have side effects that are severe. Therefore, they might not be an appropriate treatment of schizophrenia. So if we were to look at some evaluation type questions there have been, apart from the effectiveness, briefly explain one limitation of drug therapy for schizophrenia. So for this example, you could go down the route of there are side effects, um, such as tardive dyskinesia or a reduction in white blood cells, which means that patients could be actually risking their life from taking this medication. And or from tardive dyskinesia, they could stop taking the medication, so therefore it isn't appropriate. And then we've got an eight marker here, outline and evaluate the use of antipsychotic drugs to treat schizophrenia. But equally, you could get a 16 marker, outline and evaluate drug treatments as a treatment for schizophrenia, outline and evaluate the um, biological treatments of schizophrenia. So you'd have to know that that refers to drug treatments. 